Welcome back, everyone. This segment is brought to you by Anapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at anapsis.com. And I'm glad I did that in one take as we have the folks from Anapsis <laughs> on the lines <laughs> via <laughs> Skype. And uh, are you, you're Skyped in from Argentina, correct? That's right. We're down here in Buenos Aires. Excellent. Uh, Alex Horan, who those recognize uh, from uh, past many, lives. Many. Are, are there pictures of you at episode one? Yes, yes. I was part. I wasn't on the audio. Uh, I was on the audio, I think, when you didn't record. Uh, yes. But not for the real part. But yes, I was there and I bought you a round of drinks. That's yes, they were, yeah. they were one of the beer sponsors. It's really funny. I actually came across those pictures from 10 years ago. And, and, and it's Alex and a bunch of other you know people from from Core uh, where Alex used to work. So, um, but you've made the move over to Anapsis, and now you're in Argentina uh, again, and yeah. you are uh, there with a couple of folks from Anapsis who were very anxious to meet. So, uh, Alex, if you could do the uh, the introductions, absolutely, it'd be a pleasure. To to my immediate left here is uh, JP, who's our CTO and one of the founders, and then to the far left here is uh, Gutes, who runs our research lab. Excellent. Beautiful. So, uh, hi, JP. How are you? Hi, fine. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So, JP, why did you decide to start uh, the company Anapsis? Well, we basically saw uh, a problem that didn't have a solution back then in, in 2007, 2008. And actually, Mariano was very focused uh, on SAP. And I have been working with him also doing research, finding out vulnerabilities on SAP systems, and we figured out that there was this issue in the in the systems that no one was taking care of, and the systems were actually exposed, and the business critical information were, was actually exposed. And yeah, that's why we started, and that's why we, what we are doing right now. We are developing software for for to protect companies, uh, to protect SAP implementations, Oracle implementations, uh, yeah, that's uh, the short version. Excellent. So, uh, Gutes, what is your role uh, in research? What are some of the things that you're currently uh, researching for Anapsis? Well, we we research uh, different flavors of SAP products and find vulnerabilities. Um, we publish advisories and we do a lot of, a lot of stuff. And then uh, we also analyze what happens in the world of SAP in terms of security and bring that into our products. Uh, by prototyping new features, by uh, implementing new ways of uh, doing nasty stuff and in order to test SAP security. So that's basically our role. So does Oracle love you or hate you or does it depend on the certain week that we're on? Uh, yeah, I would say it depends on the week. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, Go ahead. I mean, at the, at the very end, I mean, we're all to, to help people be more secure, so they should love us and, uh, all the time. Um, so are they, uh, have they been gotten better to work with over the years and kind of uh, developed a relationship with them in terms of disclosing vulnerabilities? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been actually, most specifically with SAP, we have been growing and developing a, a, an interesting relationship, but there in the beginning, they were not happy at all if you <laughs> I bet not. went back to them with the vulnerability, hey, there's a problem with your software, right? They were they were not happy at all. So it was kind of uh, changing over time and nowadays they understand you are helping them improve their software and their customers to, to be more secure, right? So uh, now it's way different than mm. five or six years ago. That's really cool. Have you ever thought of branching outside of SAP and branching out to some other products, or have you already done some of that, or is still the focus very much on the, the SAP products? Well, we, we are very focused on SAP, but we are also covering uh, Oracle business critical applications, such as JD Edwards, EVs and Suite, uh, and we have been holding presentations and um, uh, reporting advisories are, uh, around that too. So, yeah, we are going beyond SAP and that's our plan. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. Um, what, uh, what kind of, uh, so I know Alex is there and Alex, you're uh, the product manager, is that correct? That's correct. So, Alex, have you seen the show Halt and Catch Fire? Uh, no, I have not. 
So the, it takes place in the 80s in the, the PC industry, and there's this very, very interesting character who's one of the main characters in the show, and he's a product manager at that time. So I, I strongly recommend that you go watch that show. Uh, All right. And maybe not take notes about how to be a product <laughs> manager, but it's very interesting. Um, so uh, in terms of the, the roadmap, as uh, I know from working for a vendor that there are product roadmaps, what's, what's kind of... Uh, What's on the roadmap for Anapsis? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, without going into too much detail and boring everyone to death, uh, what we've really noticed is a real need in the enterprise for like a, a complete ability to analyze all of their SAP systems uh, and provide basically an overall number or an overall uh, sense of the, the risk that those systems uh, present to the organization. Uh, and talking to uh, quite a few people, SAP systems make up you know, 80% of their, their kind of critical business infrastructure in the sense of the data it processes, the, the information that's flowing through it, but is 5 or 10% of their security focus. So uh, we're seeing people moving away from the days where SAP is so critical, you're not allowed to touch it, it's too sensitive, don't touch it, you might break it, to we really need to understand that this cannot be broken. Uh, who can help us just provide that continuous picture? So we're, we're really focusing on the enterprise, uh, our Anapsis security platform, which we had, uh, launched uh, in Q4 last year, uh, deploying that out in the enterprise so they get this immediate, immediate real-time information about the, 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 the risk state and the compliance state of their uh, security platforms, plus monitoring for attacks, etc., against those platforms. The customers in, you know, it's interesting, our, my day job company and your company are in a kind of a similar situation. I mean, do you ever get customers that say, well, you know, you're developing this really cool software, right? And like, we can tell you about more vulnerabilities in your environment. And the customers come back and say, well, I can't even deal with the vulnerabilities that I know about today. And now you're going to tell me about a whole bunch of other vulnerabilities in my SAP exactly. system, which I didn't know about yesterday. And I can't deal with what I have on my plate. Yeah. So what, what, do you, what do you tell people in that situation? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. So see, you know, you're, we're either delivering bad news, like, you know, you thought you were okay, and we're, we're trying to find ways to point out that you're not, or... You know, like you say, you've already got a full time, two years worth of uh, patches to apply, and now we've just introduced these these uh, these other ones. So it's definitely a, a challenge for people. Uh, the way I approach it is, you know, I used to when I was very young, uh, back probably when you filmed your first episode, think that you should patch everything. That that's what every organization should do. Every enterprise should patch everything. And now I'm mature. I know, you know what? That's not practical. But if you you know you've only got so many patches you can apply, so many security updates you can make. You've got to make the ones you apply count. And I believe that's what our technology allows people to do is, is make a more educated decision about where to apply their security resources, their security dollars, their security patching efforts in a way that uh, uh, brings about the biggest reduction in risk in their environment for you know, the security dollars they have to spend. So but I definitely appreciate that you know, to some degree you could argue that, that you and I both come in and just say, here's a list of problems, good luck with that. And you know, we're trying to find ways to, to better help people deal with those problems. Um, so, Gutez, when you, when you get to um, look at the security of the SAP systems, do you ever get to a point where you're like, I really think I've found the majority of vulnerabilities in this software. And then, like, what triggers, like, the next round? Is it is it an update? I mean, do updates come fast enough where you're always finding vulnerabilities? Or do you feel like at some point you get to a point where you're like, I think I've exhausted all my resources because your research is really focused on one particular product, which I think is interesting. Well, that, that's a good question. I mean, when I entered an uh one of the, the, the things I was afraid of was of that being very, very, uh, like, bounded to a specific product but when you start looking at SAP product family you, you realize that there's the, the ecosystem is so big mm. you have web applications web servers uh, you have prioritary <coughs> products you have um, different stuff and you always find new vulnerabilities you always have new flavors of the products new platforms coming out from SAP um, so you always have something to look at uh, there's there's no you never get a the, you never get to the limit of the vulnerabilities you can find. I mean, the, the software they produce is uh, so big that the the attack surface is also uh, very big, mm. and the variety of attack vectors is very big. So you never get to to exhaust the the things that you can look at uh, mm. we, when speaking about SAP. I mean, if you if you if you mention SAP, you you just mention in a company with a huge variety of products, 
And every company that runs SAP, they don't they don't run only one product. They have a whole ecosystem of that. They have a business applications. They also have um, uh, database engines that are very powerful. So you can always go further and and find some things. JP, that as the CTO, are there technologies that you're kind of uh, envisioning that can really help uh, people who are running SAP and be able to secure this platform? As Gudez just said, you know, there's tons and tons of different technology. Is there like you know a particular widget or this magical thing that you envision is to really kind of take SAP security to the next level? Uh, well, um, it's a difficult question, <laughs> um, but yeah, there is the, the the thing with the SAP products is that the good thing is that over time the SAP products were improving in terms of security. Like mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, there were vulnerabilities everywhere, uh, but now systems are getting more mature, and and even with new products that SAP is releasing. For example, the uh, SAP is pushing very hard uh, HANA, which is an in-memory database. It's kind of their star product, uh, and itself is very secure. Even though we we do research and we do uh, report vulnerabilities uh, continuously in, in that product, it's uh, completely different from their old products, right? Hmm. So from the, the, the other um, architecture that they were used to have. So it's uh, that's that's a very good product, but yeah. SAP environments are way too complex uh, in order to do like, like to have a magical solution, right? That's why we we develop specialized software in order to uh, kind of tackle that problem. We we have in in our software we know the protocols, we know the products, we know the versions, we know the vulnerabilities, and we can kind of uh, keep an eye on all the SAP infrastructure from a single point, and that's why. That's what we have been working on, and uh, um, yeah, that's that's why Onapsis started from the beginning, right? Mm. I mean, go ahead, Jack. Is Jack, is your mic live? I don't think your mic is live. Going to sleep. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, there we go. Hey, uh, I just had a question. Given that everybody in, I assume, most organizations that use SAP products uh, understand how critical this is to their businesses, do you find it at least easier to get uh, management or executives to understand the importance of uh, security in the product? I mean, if you try to explain why some of the more esoteric uh, things that happen in, in our environment, you know, trying to explain DNS sec to an executive may be tricky. Uh, trying to explain to an executive that the SAP system might not work or might leak all your data, it seems to me that that should be... Uh, <laughs> Uh, not that it's easier to fix, but it should at least be able to get uh, the management and above to understand that it's bad. Is that your experience, that they at least understand this is bad? Yeah, uh, and it's it's uh, also a difficult task to to actually communicate that uh, in, a, in a good way to the management, right? But you cannot go and say, hey, your SAP gateway or your message server or your protocols are not properly configured or secure, someone uh, will be able to execute commands, right? But if you say, hey, you are accountable for the information that is on your SAP systems, so if someone steals that information, you can uh, be subject to, um, like, um, you, 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 have, you can go to jail, right? You can be... Um, you can have a fine. There are many bad things that could happen. Once you you can communicate that, and you, once you can communicate that there are compliance uh, regulations, that there are things that actually are directly related to the SAP systems, because the SAP systems are providing the infrastructure to process all that information. Now that that message is completely different, and and, and that really helps. I have a really important question for you guys. What are you drinking? And is that meat in the studio? <laughs> yeah. Selena said there was some kind of, uh, is it like a port wine? Like what? Uh -huh. Des describe it's that. Like oh, yeah. it's, oh, for an, uh, oh, here yeah, we go. Yeah. Al Alex is the expert drinker. Look, he's not even in his country of origin. He's in New <laughs> Zealand, which is like the Australian Canada. And he's going to describe for you. <laughs> Oh, uh, did, I say, did I say that out loud? <laughs> oh, I, where that came from? Wow. Wow. 
Are you gonna are you gonna make sheep sex jokes now? I mean, as long as you've gone there, really, dude. So let the man answer what he's drinking, and I believe there is meat in the Frenet, oh, room. Frenet Bronco. That's uh, that's a uh, an acquired taste, to put it mildly. It's definitely an acquired taste. Yeah, the first time I had it, I thought they'd given me roof tar. Yeah. By <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't by mistake. They gave it to you intentionally. So is it like yeah. a, is it like a grappa, or is it what? It's more like a, you know, just get a Jaggermeister yeah. and, and make it worse. <laughs> and this is it. It's, yeah. it it's, I didn't think that was possible, but okay, apparently it is. It is an Italian <laughs> bitters of the of a liqueur bitters. I got I'll, I'll bring some time if you want to like pucker your face. It's great in. I do. Yeah. I, I want to. Well, I, in honor of our friends at Anapolis, you know, I want to try it. It's, if you've had Campari or something, it, it's more face puckering than. Gotcha. In that. It's actually uh, common in the west coast of the U.S. for bartenders when uh, you buy them a shot and you want to do a shot with a bartender. They'll often do, uh, particularly in the Bay Area, shots of Frenette because it's not like doing shots of Jameson where you'll do six or eight or ten of them on a shift and then fall over and can't drive home. Those slow you down. Hmm. Throw, throw a shot of that stuff back and you'll slow right down. Interesting. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's uh, – yeah. I'll bring some in a few weeks. Is that – it's it's your safe bed for hangover. I got you. And you guys yeah. drinking that straight, or are you mixing it, or a cocktail, no, or it with, with cola, with coke. Cola. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And and what what are you guys eating there in the studio? What's it? So Alex, like, what's your, when you visit Argentina, right? Like, what's what? your what's your favorite <laughs> kind of thing to get? Oh, you want to see what we're eating? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm <laughs> Now I'm going to be so, hungry. Uh, it's very uh, much a meat oriented culture here. I've been here for two weeks now, and I've not had a vegetable yet. <laughs> my, dude, my youngest son would, needs to go to Argentina, dude. He is a total carnivore. That kid will eat an entire piece of steak, and he's not even two yet. And the kid will yeah. eat a whole piece of steak. <laughs> and so he would love it here. It's uh, asado, like the barbecue. Takes two hours to cook, low heat, long time. But this is our, our dinner. Wow. Oh. Look at that. That looks awesome. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a simple life, but, you know. Are you guys in the office? Do you guys like have a rotisserie like yeah. grill in yeah. the office? Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. Full bar, rotisserie, usual stuff. You know. Usual. <laughs> yeah, you mean something you'd find in the office? We're yeah, doing something anywhere. wrong. Uh, yeah, I know. What is, what wait, is going wait. on here? You've got plenty of extra space over there, Paul. I do. But there's a whole corner. We we need to start cooking some meat. Well, that's great. Um, so where, uh, uh, Alex, I know uh, Selena's in charge of marketing, so I know that she has several conferences which she's uh, attending. Where, where can people find uh, Anapsis at the next conference? That's a great question. Why don't we ask uh, Selena herself <laughs> and have her come around from behind the camera? Hi, Selena. <laughs> Did you think you were going to hide from me? I don't yeah. think so. That's not allowed. <laughs> Selena, you're, so wait, you're in Argentina too. You're missing all this fabulous snow that you're having in Boston, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you got a really? feeling that the snow will last for a while. Okay? When do you guys? Me, the snow will be waiting for you. Now, when are you when are you traveling back home? Well, so. you know, we're gonna try to travel on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> You've got. It's totally fine. You've got an extra few days in Argentina. Enjoy them. I'll. Um, we'll send one of the interns to go shovel your driveway for you, Selena. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, Monday and Tuesday is Carnival here. Oh, so. you should totally oh, just stay. Yeah. I think you should cancel your flights home now because yeah. you're not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> You'd much rather be stuck there than Houston. Yeah. <laughs> so, Selena, where, where can people go find um, uh, Anapsis at some uh, marketing events coming up? Yeah, we do a lot of, you know, the SAP-specific shows. So, SAP GRC, SAP Sapphire. Um, we'll be at RSA. There, we were there last year, um, and then we do a couple like CISO style shows and Black Hat for sure. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a pretty. That's a, that's a good mix. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So now, what's your agenda while the both of you are in Argentina? Like for the re the rest of your time, you this? are you strat this? <laughs> are you strategizing, or are you just eating meat and drinking, or is there a mixture? It's synergizing, Paul. We're synergizing. You know. Synergizing, I see. Coming I was up with the two you know, usual stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I've been I've been down here. I've been here for two weeks working with the engineering team. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. we have a, a a big and a, a good engineering team here. So planning the year, working on what we're going to do, our priorities, that type of thing. So 
It's just a coincidence that it's during the worst snow that Boston's ever seen. You I know? see. Yeah. <laughs> coincidence. I see how that works. I see how that works. Very cool. Um, did anyone have so many questions for our illustrious panel in Argentina, who norm- half of which are normally in Boston? <laughs> are you doing any shows in Boston, Selena? Any local shows? Um, I think there's a couple that we're, we're looking at, but we're, for now, no, not yet. Okay. You should consider maybe B-Sides Boston. I'm going to be giving a talk there. Oh, Ooh. cool. Okay. For sure. I will, in fact, if you ping me, I'll share with you the talk that I'm thinking about giving there, and it may have some overlap into the space that we're kind of both in. Uh, so as long as we're job, ignoring so. our audience, make sure you guys ping me before you go to RSA. <laughs> 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 Absolutely, Jack. <laughs> Cool. Okay, great. Especially if you like tiki drinks. Yeah, I love I love <laughs> tiki on drinks. On somebody else's company card. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> I like paying for them, but I feel like it's better that way. Well, guys, thank you very much. Um, uh, the folks from Anapsis, we, we look forward to uh, having you here in studio. Now, are there any plans from, from some of the folks from Argentina to come up to Boston, maybe? To come up to the local area? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we go there very, very often. So, yeah. Uh, a yeah. few of them quite like cigars, so I think we'll have to organize something. I would love uh, very much if you both could, and anyone uh, from uh, the Argentinian office especially, to come up here, have some cigars. Uh, of course, we can't legally have the Cuban variety of cigars yet, he- yet so here in the U.S., <laughs> but that's okay. I would love very much for you to come to the studio. It would be great fun. And, and bring, bring, your, bring your meat? Is that appropriate? <laughs> 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 I guess. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if we can find uh, an Argentine butcher in the area, but we can certainly find Brazilian butcher shops in the area. To, to no, 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 no. I see. You I was. I, I, you I, just I greatly offended them, Jack. I just Thanks I for see. that. I just, Hook, I, line, <laughs> sinker. I may have been trolling there. I may have been trolling. Um, well, everyone, thank you so much for coming on Security Weekly. It was nice chatting with you. I hope to chat with you again, uh, especially the next time you're up here. Come back, have you here in studio. So thanks again. Enjoy your drinking and meat stuff that you got going on down there. Thank you, guys. Alex and Selena, safe travels. Again, my advice to you is to stay there. Just Come back when the weather clears. May, June. May. This is what happens. I yeah. can't help it. That's so. right. You have a sleeveless shirt on, Selena. I'm <laughs> it's like 10 degrees outside, okay? Just put that in perspective for you. It is. It is. Yeah, it's pretty hot here. It's like 85. We're, we're not complaining. <laughs> we're not complaining. We're, we're strong. Somebody, someone's going to take it for the team, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, I, I can't wait to see you guys again. I can't wait to hang out. At the very least, we'll have to get together uh, at Black Hat. Uh, those of you that are fans of the show know that uh, Alex and Selena especially have a long history with the show. A- Alex being at, at episode one and Selena not too far after that. So uh, it's nice chatting with you both again. Hope to see you soon. JP and Kutes, thanks. Nice nice to meet you. Enjoy. I hope nice to meet you in person you. someday Peter. soon. All righty. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Cheers. And with that, we're going to take a short break, come back. We'll hopefully get Michael Santar Calangelo on the show. He wants to come on for stories this week as well. Nice. Um, so we're going to do that, take a short break, come back, and do stories for this week. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere.